Okay, so uh, I'm Craig with Slash Gear, and we have Steve Wozniak here with us. Um, first, I want to start off by uh, mentioning physical controls in cars. You mentioned how you preferred uh, feeling buttons rather than using a touchscreen. Yeah, the er ergonomics of your body can give you a lot of guidance without having to look at a button. You can feel which is the right button on a steering wheel uh -huh. down below to get through menus. I much prefer that to a screen where you have to divert your eye and your attention to hit a button and if you miss you try again and you know when you yeah. hold your hand out people think it's easy to hit the right buttons on a phone because you're holding it when you're not holding it and it's on a dashboard it's so hard to tap and hit the right buttons even mm -hmm. um, no it's dangerous there's a danger to driving but you know I, I won't do that to myself I just give up if it's, yeah if, if I feel it's dangerous or you, you'd be surprised how often I tell my wife pull over or I'm gonna pull one over we pull over right on the, you know, right off the freeway, a little exit, and then we set a nav system or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I believe that. Do you think that touchscreens and physical controls can coexist, or does it have to lean one way or the other? I, I feel that obviously displays for presenting information with some of the bright organic LED displays and whatever mm -hmm. are a beautiful way to um, to see a lot of the useful information, and they can have touch on them, but it's always nice if you have good ergonomic controls without having to do the screen touching okay. or if when you have to touch the screen the buttons are very very big and it's, you aren't going to be able to make a mistake and hit the wrong thing right so yes they, they can coexist but um, but you know sometimes you don't have a choice because sometimes the least expensive way is to have one touch screen and nothing else and people who like to go that way skip a lot of the ergonomic controls the ones you can feel where they are and know what you're doing and that bothers me just to save because it saves a little money yeah you also mentioned Google Glass and how you said that it's the little display is still in your peripheral vision while you're on the I've only tried on Google road. Glass once, okay. last time. And yes, and it was right up here and it was kind of like a heads-up display. Right. Your your eye can really be very much on the road with conditions ahead of you, not 100%. You know, you could can use that display mm -hmm. and get yourself in trouble. So I would have to drive a car and try it. Of course, I'm kind of weird. One time I put on prison glasses. The glasses where you could lie back in bed and watch TV. And I drove down my street like this. <laughs> wow. So, for, for fun. But, yeah. But, um, no, but um, that's like a little street in the mountains with no cars. But I don't know. I don't know about Google Glass. That could lead to some problems just like another display. But you know what? What I find is that it's easy to look at your speedometer. Your speedometer is already look at something. even if it's not mm -hmm. if it's not a, a display it's a normal physical speedometer with a dial you're taking your eye off the road in a sense but now when you have to look further over to these these displays I feel in myself this is not as good as you know this is my eye further off the road and if I spend any time on it I'm not right right not safe um, iOS 7 they announced a lot of new features as far as vehicle integration is concerned. Um, where do you see iOS 7 going in the future as far as that's I, concerned? I, I don't know. I can't speak about iOS 7 because I have not used it. Okay. I think the users that are using it would be the best ones to ask and see is it does it have any really um, extremely good features. The beauty of it, the way it looks to the eye. It looked very beautiful to me when it was presented, but I, I have to have things in my hands and say, if, it, if the look is inconsistent between different parts of it, then I might like it, dislike it for other reasons. You have, really have to have the product to be a valid commentator on it. Okay. Last question. And and things like AirDrop. I compare, oh, yeah. I compare that to Samsung's bump method. Mm -hmm. And I don't necessarily think Apple does everything the best. <laughs> Good. Okay. That, well, that actually that brings me to the Mac Pro, the new Mac Pro. I saw the look on your face when they revealed it on the live stream. Oh, you know what? I, I get off into thinking about things. I saw the Mac Pro, and I'm very familiar with workstations. Apple used to own that market for things like um, Final Cut Pro. Now Hewlett Packard owns the market, and I have seen Hewlett Packard their machines and the engineering of them. Mm -hmm. You know, you can take two hours to replace a hard disk inside of an iMac, for example, and they have one that looks like an iMac. You just 
tilt it this way, press one button, it opens, and you pull out the hard disk. Six mm -hmm. seconds, you know. <laughs> yeah. And it's like the engineering quality and level. They have the highest, you know, level of the Xenon processors, the highest level of, of um, NAND flash memory cards for them, and graphics, the highest level graphics processors. So in that market, I was trying to decide, is this machine going to be as good and as capable as, say, a, at least a low-level Hewlett Packard, maybe a mid-level one? Mm -hmm. And I like it. I like the size and the shape. The cube, the cube is one of my biggest heartfelt memories of my life, and it reminded me much of the cube. But I was probably off thinking about something because people have sent me that picture, and I think I'm just looking at it. And I, I'm not, I'm not applauding. Yeah. Sometimes when I'm thinking, I'm not applauding because it depends. What was the statement that was made right then? I don't applaud it. Just everything that says it's time to applaud. You know, I've got to. It's got to be the right point. Okay. No, awesome. uh, but I was looking at it. I was trying to decide what size it is. Is it this tall? You know, I didn't. I couldn't tell really yeah. from from the pictures. Um, and also, um, and, and kind of. Oh, it spins around to some controls. I still think I could have seen. Could have. I've seen concept photos that look better you know, than it could have been. But uh, yeah. no, uh, I would. If I was in a workstation market, I would buy that one. I would buy it and use it, yeah. So you don't think it looks like a garbage can like everyone else is saying? No, no. Okay. I had, no, I actually thought it looked, um, because, well, it's a small enough size and it's attractive. To yeah. me, it was sort of like a cube. And I don't think anything's ever going to look as good as the cube to me. I don't know why. I love that machine. But the little, um, the, uh, what do they call it, the uh, cylinder in the middle, um, uh, some word like steam stack, but not steam yeah. stack. But the, the, the sil you know, to funnel um, the, the air up yeah. with the fan blowing it. I thought that was great to see again. Okay. It's a good concept, and, yeah. and I hope it goes. Yeah, yeah, I hope it goes big.